How's it going everyone? Chris here and what I'd like to do in today's video is pull up my Shopify store that generated just under five grand in sales yesterday, about $1,200 in profit and just walk through all of that with you. About to check in on the business for the first time today and I just want to try something more casual, no fancy cuts or edits, just talking through uh, the business and uh, kind of sharing the thought process that I have as if you were right here alongside me. Um, and I'm going to do this while answering a lot of the FAQs that I see in our school community so that hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have everything you need, all the information laid out for you to make an informed decision about starting your own print on demand or Shopify business. So without further ado, let's jump into the Shopify dashboard. And so the first thing we're going to look at together is the Shopify dashboard. Then we're going to look at the ads. We'll talk about the products, how you do your niche research, product creation, all those burning questions that everyone has. I'll try to touch on all that as we talk through the sales from yesterday. So starting off in our Shopify dashboard, I'll give it a little refresh. So yesterday we did $4,890.62 in sales, an average order value of $46.69. And our conversion rate was 3.1%. And our returning customer rate was 16.67%. Now, obviously, that's just the revenue. The more important number is how much do we actually make at the end of the day. So here in our ad account, you can see for yesterday, for the same time period, we spent $1,211.44 at a 3.12 ROAS. And I'm going to talk more about the ads uh, here in a second. But first off, so in our P&L, Here's our gross sales for the day. We paid $2,114 to Printify, which Printify, if you're not familiar, is our print provider where based on this site, we just sell t-shirts basically. We sell like some crew necks and hoodies, but 90% of sales are t-shirts. And it's just with graphic designs in a niche. And when a customer buys a shirt from our site, we then turn around and place an order from Printify. And then Printify print packs and ships it to our end customer. They charge us around eight fifty ish for a shirt. We charge twenty six ninety nine. Shipping cost is roughly a wash, and then we just make the profit in between. That's the nice part about it is that we don't have this charge here unless we have revenue coming in the door. We didn't give out any discounts yesterday, but we had fifty four dollars and seventy one cents in refunds, which gives us a gross profit of twenty seven hundred and nine dollars. Then we had our Shopify and PayPal transaction fees, which the Shopify fees aren't updated yet. We wait until the transactions settle on our account so we can see the exact amount. And we had $54.32 in PayPal fees. There's our ad spend costs. As you can see, we spend a tiny bit on Google, but vast majority comes from Facebook. And our overhead expenses, which this is our Shopify, Klaviyo, our customer service team, all of our software expenses, that comes out to about $144 per day. So after deducting all those expenses, that leaves us with $1,279.28. But then we also get 5% rebate back from Printify, which gives us $74 back. And then we put all of our expenses, aside from ad spend, on a Capital One 2% cash back card, which I don't know about for other countries, but in the US, this is available. I think they do it as a charge card now rather than a credit card, which just means you have to pay it off monthly, which is fine because you don't really want to keep a balance riding anyway. But we get 2% back on that, which gives us a grand total of just under $1,400 in um, net profit. But then Shopify fees will be probably like 3% or so. So call it $1,250 or $1,300 in profit for the day. That would be around like forty two grand for the month, which isn't too bad. So those are the numbers behind it. Now, obviously there's a lot of burning questions that go along with it. So now let's take a look at what the store actually looks like. And the way I'll show you that is by giving you a glimpse at one of the stores that I used to run and sold. And that's this company called Yoga Stay. And Yoga Stay is literally the exact same type of business that we're running in the one that I just showed you the P&L for. Started off as just a basic t-shirt store selling graphic designs in a specific niche. And the way that we pick that niche is by doing something called the bumper sticker test. And that's 
basically, if you've ever seen somebody rocking a bumper sticker on the back of their car for a specific topic or interest, then that's probably a pretty good niche to launch a print on demand store for. The reason for that is that if somebody's willing to show it off on the back of their car, they probably wear a shirt or a hoodie for that same kind of topic. As you can see, a lot of the designs and the best sellers are just these different kinds of like abstract, sometimes floral patterns. In this case, we did a lot of mandalas because that has like a lot of significance for yogi culture. And then we did some sayings like just breathe. And then after we launched with about 50 or 60 designs, and there weren't any yoga pants when we first launched. That's come much later after the fact. After we launched, we noticed that certain styles were performing a lot better than others. In particular, we noticed that this like yogi dancer mixed with a tree around them, um, that person's actually doing a specific yoga pose. And we noticed that we were getting a lot of sales for this design because people were commenting about the type of pose. And we're like, if people are commenting about that pose, what other poses are there? And we rolled out, I think, like 10 different designs of this same kind of style, where it's a different yoga pose mixed with some kind of nature aspect. That's just one example. We launched with 50 designs, try to do a wide variety, everything from funny styles to aesthetically pleasing, stuff like this is what I mean by aesthetically pleasing or that, mixed with like sentimental phrases. This one, make a wish. And funny ones like this one here that I won't even say because YouTube will ban me. But we launched with a wide variety within a specific niche. And bonus points if the niche that you pick is in something that you're also interested in yourself. Because it makes it far more easy brainstorming new design ideas and more enjoyable when it's something that you actually like to talk about and it's not just like pulling teeth. And that's the hack to running this type of business and any business really it's making it something that you enjoy doing it'll make having to do it day after day a lot more enjoyable we launched with about 50 designs and then very quickly noticed like i mentioned that patterns like these were performing well so we made more designs like them it wasn't too complicated and this was back like three or four years ago so mid journey was not a thing dolly was not a thing we were doing it the old-fashioned way back in the day we would have a Trello board loaded up with design ideas. Then we go on either Fiverr or Upwork, hire designers, which can be pretty expensive depending on where you're looking. And then we would have them make the types of designs that we were looking for. And it'd be a lot of back and forth. All that to say, now with the AI tools that are out there, we are definitely blessed and it's a far easier, faster, and cheaper process. And I've made a lot of videos about how to generate these types of designs with AI. So I won't get into too much depth here, but that's the basic process. So once we have those 50 or 75 designs, then we would create a Facebook ad account, which I've done a two hour long Facebook tutorial on that. But the cliff notes is I would literally just take these images, these mock-up pictures like these, and that would be my ad creative. There's a lot of hype around like video ads and TikTok and all that Facebook ad with this picture. And the ad copy, I'll give you all the secret sauce. The ad copy was literally uh, five stars and then a customer review, which you need a customer review. If you don't have a customer yet, just get you know your mom to review it for you. Customer review and then a sale. So like shop 35% off for a limited time. Or if it's a holiday, like Labor Day sale, 35% off. And then shop now and the link to your store and you drive the traffic to the collection page, which is like this rather than to the home page. And the headline would be like yoga t-shirt sale and then a little yoga emoji. And that was it. And the, I can't emphasize enough, like how simple the site and the ads actually are the vast majority of like the, what actually ends up deciding if a store is going to be successful or not comes down to the niche that you pick and the quality of the designs. And like the overall site layout, it has to be clean and you can't have broken links, stuff like that. But when it comes to the ads, it's super simple. I know it's easy to say like it's super simple, but just keep in mind that it, it's not like an overly complicated process because Facebook has gotten much better at optimizing for um, like for you. You don't, like when I was running this store, I had hundreds of ad sets. Now when I run this store, here I can show you actually. 
when I run this store, I have five campaigns. And this is honestly messier than it even needs to be. But I basically have my testing campaign where normally this is just when I've spent time on the business and I'm, I've kept things organized. The structure that it would normally be is testing ad libraries where I uploaded my ad creative. So it's a library of basically just pictures like this with the same ad copy on every ad, same headlines. And then I would put them in a uh, testing campaign to see which ads perform the best. I would just do super low budgets, test like 50 ad creatives. And I'd start off with five, $10 a day budgets per ad set, like four to six ads per ad set, find the winners, and then graduate them to my main campaigns. Now what I've done here and by main campaigns, the ones that I move my winners into and the ones that I am consistently like monitoring to increase the budgets whenever possible. And I try to not make any kind of settings changes to them like it, whenever I can. Because anytime I do that, it throws off the algorithm and it has to re-optimize. So there's that process. And then what I've done here that you don't even have to, that makes it look more complicated, is I've split up my worldwide and U.S. audiences and I've done some combined you really don't have to do that. Just doing all one audience works completely fine. And you don't even have to do anything complicated with the targeting now. You can just basically do like US 18 plus or worldwide 18 plus. Then I just normally exclude like India, Trinidad and Tobago and Pakistan because those countries, nothing against them. They just always like overload campaigns with insanely cheap clicks, but nothing ever converts. And pretty much all your spend ends up going to those countries. So you just exclude those and you start off with low budgets and incrementally increase it like 10 to 20% once or twice a week. And yeah, it's pretty, pretty hands off on the ad side now. And now Facebook has my favorite type of ad, which is a advantage plus catalog ad. And the reason I love it is that it is by far the easiest thing to set up. It is just uh, link your catalog from Shopify and it basically does the rest for you not even exaggerating like here's two examples of this one ad set has been running i haven't touched it at all aside from increasing the budget and in the past seven days it's spent 1859 dollars at a 3.25 return which is really good and then just yesterday actually i noticed that this was only targeting the united states so what did i do being the ad genius that I am, I did something super complex and I duplicated it and changed the targeting to worldwide. And that's it. And then that campaign or that ad set ran at a 13 ROAS. So yeah, aside from increasing the budgets, that's pretty much all that I've done for the past month or two. So we got married last month and moved. So we've had a lot going on. So now we've talked about choosing your niche types of products, Printify, the ads, the site optimization that I want to mention, when it comes to optimizing your Shopify store, there is a ton of shiny objects. Like there are apps and trinkets and widgets and AI, everything now. And 90% of it is just plain BS. You absolutely do not need the vast majority of apps and stuff that are being peddled to you in like the Shopify app store. And if you're in the e-commerce space, you're probably getting targeted on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook with ads for softwares all the time because you're in that pocket of people that they've identified as likely to be running a Shopify store. So welcome. But nine times out of 10, you can ignore all those and just go back to the basics of make good products for people that are buying those products. <laughs> yeah. The first one is make... <laughs> Choose a good niche where people are actually buying. Like yoga is a perfect example. People are super passionate. There's a ton of people that are into it, and it's something that people love to show off. And then you pick a good niche, and then make good products for those people. And if you just iterate on that process, just making sure that you have a good market and you just make better and better products, you really, yes, you can add in like the latest conversion rate optimization hack, but good products, there's nothing that makes up for it. So just keep that in mind that nine times and i'm saying this from personal experience the amount of times that i've suffered from shiny object syndrome and been working on what really matters in the business but it's boring making new designs doing product research day in and day out so i convinced myself that oh this new widget that does who knows what but it looks cool and it's got four and a half out of five stars and it's trending on 
some software sites, like that looks cool. Maybe that's the new thing. And I convinced myself that's actually more valuable to the business than what I'm doing, which is improving the core product, improving the customer experience. And even though this is print on demand and it's drop shipping, which gets a bad connotation sometimes, the real value and the real money to be made in a business like this and any business really is in your customer relationships. Over delivering on when somebody buys from you for the first time, doing everything in your power to make sure that that is not the last time they buy from you. And a lot of drop shippers that are just like finding crap on Alibaba, throwing up a single product store and shipping it to customers, that's not building something sustainable, it's building cash flow. Because sure, you can continue to jump on trends, throw up single product um, you know, funnels and make some money with TikTok ads, but you have no LTV, you have no returning customers, you have no email list, which is a perfect segue to my next thing I want to show you, which is our email automations and our email revenue. So here in our Klaviyo account, that's the email service that we use for all of our automations and campaigns, which Klaviyo, to give you a frame of reference, is like MailChimp or ActiveCampaign or SendLane. If you've ever heard of any of those names, that's basically what Klaviyo is, but Klaviyo is meant specifically for e-commerce businesses. So that's why we use it. But here you can see, this is for the past seven days, we've generated uh, $30,817 in the business overall, and $4,700 of that has come from our email revenue, which honestly, these numbers are not even that impressive. I've seen accounts where it's 30 to 35% of their total sales, which is far greater than what we're seeing right now, but we're working on it. We're improving our flows. We're tweaking things. Join the school community in the link down below if you want to see like the latest tests that we're running with our emails and i'm going to be launching like a detailed email training there soon but 4700 dollars in the last seven days completely on autopilot all from flows and campaigns that we pre-schedule and there's no ad costs on this so this is two like 2500 to three grand in pure profit that like that's just from one week so multiply that by four it's 10 grand in profit just from our email revenue. And that's something that if you're a drop shipper and you're just selling some crap from Alibaba, you're never going to get that because nobody is going to, one, you don't have a big enough catalog for people to come back and buy from you again because there's no like congruent products. There's no upsells or cross sells. But number two, if people are waiting six weeks to never to get their product from who knows where in China, they're not going to have a great experience. They're not going to come back and buy from you again. So I know I went on a bit of a tangent there, but that's why I believe in this business model so much is because one, it requires basically no money to get started aside from the little bit that you put into your ads. Two, anybody can do it nowadays with the, the help of AI, like a $10 mid-journey subscription, the lowest plan, just go start playing around in there. You can make some amazing stuff if you just practice an hour or two a day. And those types of designs that if put the time into learning how to use Midjourney or Dolly or Stable Diffusion, you can make some stuff that is definitely going to get clicks like when you're running ads. And the last thing I want to touch on that doesn't seem to get a lot of mention or airtime in uh, e-commerce or dropshipping YouTube videos is that the real value in starting a business like this is, yes, it's it can generate you money and it will if you stick with it long enough and you know uh, stay focused. It definitely can. But to me, the more valuable thing Maybe I'm just saying this after seven years and in hindsight, but the far more valuable asset that's been built up over those years for me is the skill set. It's the marketing knowledge. It's the product research knowledge. It's the site optimization and the customer experience optimization knowledge. All of those things that you don't even notice on the path to like trying to launch and scale to like even your first hundred sales, you are learning at such a insane rate that it's almost not until a couple of years down the road that you pick your head up and you're like, holy crap, I've really learned a thing or two. So that's why when I get a lot of questions like how quickly can, uh, you know, I, I start making money with this. How quickly can I make my first sale? I've tried to figure out the best way to phrase it, but like basically just trust the process, enjoy the process and savor not just the money that you're making and the potential money, but also the skills that you're learning, because that's something that doesn't matter what age you are, that compounds throughout your entire lifetime. Yes, I've made money and sold businesses running this business model, but the skills that I've built up are far more valuable, like when extrapolated out over decades, 
rather than just these businesses over a handful of years. The reason I bring that up is just keep in mind how much you're learning. And that's something I hold on to in the days where it's toughest, like doing this days where you wake up and you feel like you're doing nothing right. You question why you're (laughs) started a business. You're like beating yourself up, calling yourself non-helpful names. Everyone has those days and holding on to like remembering like how far you've come and the skills you've learned even when it doesn't directly show it on your Shopify dashboard always helps me get through those times. So just want to share that. Hopefully that's helpful to somebody out there. But anyway, I know we kind of went in a bunch of different directions with this, but I hope this has been helpful for you and seeing behind the scenes, some of the thought process behind this. And if you want to see more stuff like this, feel free to join the free school community down below. It's got the course and I answer a lot of people's questions in there. Be sure to like and comment if you want to see more casual like raw format like this be happy to do it it's honestly a lot more fun and yeah thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video